take your shoulder and kind of lean over a little bit this way and give a shoulder bump to a friend. Today is March 27th, and you know what that means. It's my three quarters birthday. Oh, you didn't know that? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, but I'm actually not kidding about the part that's my three quarters birthday. So as I was thinking today and about national holidays and whatnot, and then it just occurred to me, I remembered that March 27th is my three quarters birthday and I thought it would be kind of funny to share it with you and why I know that it's my three quarters birthday. So growing up, so my, so my actual full birthday is June 27th. So growing up in school, we would celebrate each other's birthdays in the classroom. And so if it was someone's birthday, they might bring in some treats, like maybe some cupcakes or some cookies or brownies and then we'd get to eat at the end of the day. So it'd be this kind of like fun, like celebrate the person and sometimes we would decorate their locker or their desk. Um, but the only problem is because my birthday is June 27th and I grew up in Iowa where our school doesn't go very late into June like it does here. Like I know here it can go, it can, I mean, depending on how many snow days, it can go kind of late. But in Iowa, we start earlier, we start in like, like the last week, maybe the second to last week of August, and then we end really early. So we end before June. We end like the third week of May or sometimes the last week of May. And so our schedule is a little bit shifted. So anyways, June 27th, my birthday was never during the school year. And so I was always kind of bummed because I wanted to celebrate, you know, my birthday, like on my birthday in school with brownies and like a surprise kind of like that. Um, but I couldn't and so and so I remember once I thought to myself, okay So it might have been second grade or third grade when I thought about this because basically what would happen is if you had a summer birthday You could pick a different day during the year and then you would celebrate your birthday But I was like, you know what? I want to celebrate it on like something that's kind of like similar to my birthday It's not my birthday, but my half birthday and so I looked at the calendar and I figured out my half birthday But guess when my half birthday is it's December 27th. That's just two days after Christmas. Um, and so everybody's still on Christmas break. Nobody's back at school. And so I thought to myself, okay, what if we did my three quarters birthday? I looked it up, March 27th. 
only like if you guys remember what I was saying last week about how there were a lot of people out in the um, granary burial ground and how it might be allowed because a lot of people not near Boston but in other places have spring breaks during March. Well, March 27th was on my spring break and so we couldn't do my birthday on my three quarters birthday because that was during spring break. So it's like my real birthday was in summer break. My half birthday was in winter Christmas break. My three quarters birthday was in spring break. Um, and so then I had to look up my one quarter birthday and my one quarter birthday was September 27th, which thankfully there's nothing happening then. So I could pick to have it during my quarter birthday if I wanted to. <laughs> Anyways, I just kind of remembered that story. I was thinking about the date today. And I thought it would be kind of funny to share with you all. So it's not actually a national holiday, my three quarters birthday. But I just thought it was kind of a funny story that I wanted to share. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk through our schedule for the day. Uh, like I mentioned last week, Amanda and Jimmy are both going to be doing things for the remainder of the episodes that we have. We have three more episodes, including today, of normal episodes. And then we have one special Easter episode that we'll be doing. So for our schedule, we just did our ah la 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 hallelujahs. We're next going to go see Jimmy, and he's actually going to be interviewing someone today, so this is really exciting. We'll come back here to do our Bible time and prayer, um, and then we're going to do a quick music video. We'll go see Amanda for craft time, have a few more music videos, and then we'll be back here for the question of the day at the very end. All right, well, I hope you all have a great time with Jimmy and having this interview with someone new from the church. Although maybe I shouldn't say new exactly because I think you've met this person a few other times before. All right, well, I'll see you all back here in just a little bit. Bye. Hello there, Children's Church. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. I know my hair looks a little different than usual, but that's because I just took a bath, and it takes forever for us puppets to dry off. Anyway, I'm pretty excited that we're getting into springtime. I love the winter and playing in the snow, but it's always great when it starts to get warm outside and the leaves and the flowers start growing again. It's really beautiful. Now, there were a couple days last week when I wasn't able to play outside because of the rain, but I kept busy by coming up with some new jokes to tell you all today. Want to hear them? <clears throat> First up, what is a kind of animal that really loves springtime? Well, I, okay, I bet a lot of them do, but one kind of animal that probably really loves springtime is kangaroos! Because they love to jump up and down and spring into the air! Get it? Because spring, like to, to jump or something, sounds like spring the season. <laughs> Next up, why don't mommy kangaroos like rainy days? Well, because the kids have to play inside. You know, that's that's one thing for, for people when we just play in the, in the living room or something. But kangaroos, remember baby kangaroos? They, they live inside their mom's pouches. So playing inside, like trying to run around and play games inside the mommy kangaroo's pouch? Yikes, that would be quite something. Now, one more. Do you think a kangaroo can jump higher than the steeple of the church? Well, the answer is yes! Because the steeple can't jump. Get it? it? It sounded like I was jumping. The, excuse me. It sounded like I was asking if a kangaroo could jump, like jump all the way up and touch the top of the steeple. But it was really the kangaroo can jump off the ground and the steeple can't. <laughs> uh, aren't those fun? So I came up 
with those first two jokes because I was thinking about springtime. And since they both had kangaroos in them, I decided to come up with one more joke that was just about kangaroos. Aren't kangaroos neat? I wish we could interview one. But since we can't, I thought maybe we could do the next best thing. Let's interview one of the people who played a kangaroo during our special Noah's Ark story a few weeks ago. Here goes. It's the Jimmy Interview Show with our very special guest star, Mr. Randall Wetzig. Yay! I think I forgot to press the button that actually starts the video call. Oh, I always do that. Okay, where's the button? Uh, ah. Hi there. My name is Jimmy the Puppet, and I'm calling you from Children's Church. Hi, Jimmy. It's great to be with you today. Oh, and it's great to see you, too. Hey, would it be okay if I asked you some questions to share with the kids? Yeah, why not? Go right ahead. Thank you so much. First off, would you like to introduce yourself in case any of the kids don't know you? Sure. Uh, well, my name is Randall Wetzig, but you can call me Randall. Hi, Randall. So, our first real question. What is the name of your job here at the church? The name of my job is Ministries Administrator. Ministries Administrator. Wow! As the Ministries Administrator, what do you do for the church? Well, I do a lot of things. Um, primarily, that means first, I work with the ministers, so I do a lot of the kind of uh, office-y kind of things um, with them, like creating spreadsheets, sending emails. I also um, help uh, organize a uh, coffee hour on Sunday. So if you have ever had a snack um, in the Welcome Center uh, on a Sunday, that's part of what I do. Um, I make some videos, I edit a podcast, I do some things like that too. Wow, that's a lot. Thank you for doing all those things. Oh, especially the snack. I love snacks. Yeah, snacks are pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Now, our next question. What is your favorite thing about being here at Park Street? What's my favorite thing about being here at Park Street? Um, you know, I think it's uh, working with all of the other people that I get to work with here because there's a lot of pretty wild people um, that work at Park Street that you might not get to see how wild they are until you see them behind the scenes. Sort of like this in these interviews. I bet you guys have met a lot of people and gotten to know them pretty well. That's what I've really enjoyed being here too. Yeah, we've gotten to meet lots of the ministers and the elders and stuff, and they're all really cool. I bet they're a lot of fun to work with. You bet. Mm -hmm. Next up, do you have any fun stories or fun facts about being here at Park Street? Well, um, Jimmy, have you ever heard of the Women's Benevolence Society? Um, the, the Women's Benevolence Society? Uh, no, what's that? Well, the Women's Benevolence Society is a, is a group of women that's been meeting since 1809, way back when the church first started. Wow. And they do all sorts of projects, they make things, they collect stamps, um, they help people out, they make, when uh, my wife and I had a baby, they made a card for us. They do some things like that, but they've been meeting for such a long time, and they've got a really interesting name, the Women's Benevolence Society. So if you ever happen to come across somebody who is in the Women's Benevolent Society, you should ask them more about what they do because they do some really neat stuff. Wow, that all sounds super cool. How many people are in the Women's Benevolent Society? You know, I don't even know. Since over the years, since it started in 1809, which is many, many years ago, 
Um, I would guess there's been hundreds of people. Wow. I'm not sure if I know anyone who is part of it. I think I'll ask my friend Amanda. Maybe she'll know someone who's part of the group. That's a good idea. Mm. Now, our next question. Do you have a favorite Bible verse that you'd like to share with the kids? Sure. Um, my favorite Bible verse is John 17, 3. It's um, Jesus is praying, and Jesus says, This is eternal life that they may know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. You might say, why, why do you like that verse? Um, and it's because, you know, we talk a lot about eternal life, but sometimes we forget what is important about eternal life. And Jesus says the important thing about eternal life is actually knowing God. That's the exciting thing. It's not just living forever. The important and exciting thing is actually knowing God as we live forever. Wow, knowing God as we live forever? That's amazing! Now, there is one more question. Sometimes here in Children's Church, we like to tell some jokes. Do you know any jokes that you can share? Ooh, jokes. Um, well, here's one. Uh, what do you get when a pig is stuck in a bush? Hmm. When a pig gets stuck in a bush, hmm, maybe something about bacon or, hmm, I don't know. What do you get when a pig gets stuck in a bush? A hedgehog. A hedgehog? Oh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure I get it, but, but I like it because hedgehogs are so cute. Hedgehogs are cute. That's, that's a big part of why I like that joke. So a hedge is actually, a, it's like a row of bushes, and a hog is another name for a pig. So pig in a bush, hedgehog. And that's actually where the name hedgehog comes from, because pigs, or because hedgehogs do look a little bit like pigs, and a lot of times they actually live in bushes or hedges. So it's kind of a funny joke, kind of a uh, true explanation of where the word comes from. Oh! Wow, I never knew that before. Oh, and now that I do know it, I like that joke even more. Thank you for telling it to us, Randall. You're welcome. And thank you for answering all of our other questions, too. It was great to talk to you. It's been great to talk to you, too, Jimmy. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. Now, have a good day. Goodbye. You, too. Bye. Wow, that was awesome! It's great how Randall helps out with so many things here at the church, like snacks and podcasts and teaching people about hedgehogs. I'm really glad that we could do an interview with him. Now, are you all ready for our Bible time? Let's go listen to Miss Christina. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Hello everyone and welcome back. Thank you so much Randall for that awesome interview. Friends, I loved learning about everything that Randall does, including the fact that he's in charge of all the snacks on Sundays. <laughs> I loved hearing about Randall's favorite Bible verse and his hedgehog joke. Friends, do you remember a long, long time ago, like two whole years ago, when we very first started doing children's church episodes online. And there was this whole thing with Amanda and Jimmy where Amanda had lost Bunny. Do you remember that? Amanda lost Bunny. It was like one of her special snuggly, cuddly animals. And Jimmy tried to help her look for it for like three or four weeks. And then in the end, it turned out it wasn't a bunny. It was a hedgehog. Do you guys remember that? But Amanda had named her little stuffed hedgehog Bunny, which was so funny. So I just thought that was kind of silly that I remembered that after Randall shared that joke about hedgehogs. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to be using our God Story for Me Bible Storybook today. 
And a couple weeks ago, we talked about Noah and the flood. Well, I didn't talk about it, but Amanda and Jimmy did, and all of the staff all dressed up talked about it. That was pretty cool. And then last week, we talked about the Tower of Babel, and now we're going to start learning about somebody named Abraham. Now, many of you might have heard some stories about someone named Abraham, and they're actually the same person. Um, and his name started out as Abraham first without like the H in it. And then God changed his name later on. But we're going to learn about that. So in this book, it actually says uh, Abraham, but really it was pronounced Abraham. So I'm going to try my best to pronounce it Abraham for now. And then later we're going to learn about God changing his name. Not today, but a different day. So we're going to be reading um, two, two stories from in here. Abraham moves to a new land. God told Abraham, I want you to move to a new land. I will show you how to get there. So Abraham told his wife, Sarah, we are going to move. So the family packed food, clothes, tents, and blankets. They tied bundles and baskets to camels and donkeys. They brought along sheep and goats. See, back then it wasn't as simple as just putting all of your stuff into a bunch of cardboard boxes and loading it onto a moving truck. Like, you couldn't just stick stuff in a car. You really had to carry everything or use animals to help you carry everything. So making a big move like that, wow, that was really hard. So they really had to trust God when God told them, I want you guys to move. Every day they walked. God told them just where to go. Every night they put up tents, ate and slept. They walked and walked. One day, God told Abram, this is the place. It will be your new home. Abram and his family thanked God. God had led them safely to a new land. And this story is called Abraham Shares. Abraham lived near his nephew, Lot. Each of them had herds of sheep, dozens of donkeys, and lots of goats and cows. So if you look here in this picture, the page before, you'll see there's Abraham and his wife. Um, and then there's also another family right here. So that was Abraham's nephew, named Lot. So that's like, if, if you were Lot, then Abram would be your uncle. So that is how they are related. So they had moved and, oh, they're awesome, there's a picture too. So they had moved and traveled all together to this new land. And like we had just read, each of them had many animals. But there was not enough grass and water for this many animals. Abram's helpers argued with Lot's helpers. This is our water, said one. No, this is our water, said another. Uh-oh, they're starting to argue. Abram told Lot, let's not fight. Let's give our animals more room to eat and drink. So Abram and Lot climbed up on top of the hill to see all of the land. Abraham said, Lot, you choose. Take whichever land you want. And there were two choices. There was a flat grassy land and there was also kind of a hilly land, but it didn't really have a lot of grass on it. So if you were picking a spot for your animals and you know that your animals need to eat grass, well, it's probably better to pick the land with more grass, right? So Abraham was being really nice because Abraham was basically letting his nephew Lot pick which side he wanted. And well, you can guess what side Lot picked. <laughs> Lot chose the flat, grassy land. He and his animals moved away. Abraham lived in the hilly land. There was not as much grass, but Abraham knew that God would take care of him and all of his animals. 
So I think this story is really cool because it shows us about how Abraham chose to trust God in many different ways throughout this whole story. So at the very beginning, Abraham lived with his wife. And actually, I said it wrong. So Sarah is the name that her name changed into later when Abraham's name changed into Abraham. But her name was actually Sarai at the beginning. So I should probably say Sarai instead. So Abraham and Sarai, they lived, they lived somewhere. They lived in a land. And then God told them, I'm going to move you guys to a new land. So I want you to follow me. And so they had to choose if they were going to obey God and trust him and follow him, even though they had no idea where they were going. Because remember what it said is they packed everything up and then every day they would walk and God would tell them where to go. So they didn't even know where they were going to end up in the end. They were just trusting God and trusting that God had a good plan, even though they weren't sure what was happening. They were trusting God every single day until they finally arrived. And then here, when there were too many animals and not enough food and water for all the animals, Abraham could have said, all right, well, I'm gonna go over here to this really nice grassy area and lot you can go take the other place that is not so grassy. <laughs> but instead, Abraham let Lot choose. He decided to share and be nice and kind and let Lot choose. And of course, Lot chose the place that was all grassy. And so Abraham again had to trust God. He had to trust God that even though he was ending up in a spot, well, this picture looks like there's a lot of grass. I think the artist just kind of drew it that way, but there wasn't a lot of grass. I mean, there's a little bit, but not as much as in the other place. And so here again, Abraham had to trust that God would take care of him, even though Abraham's nephew, Lot, picked the better land. So there's a lot of examples here in this story where we're seeing that Abraham trusted God no matter what. All right, so let's all do a quick prayer together. So I want you to find whatever position is most comfortable for you so that your mind and your heart is focused on our prayer time right now. And also so that you're not distracting any neighbors. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for always being with us, for always listening to us. We can talk to you anytime and anywhere. And God, thank you for providing for us. God, thank you that it doesn't matter if we aren't sure what's going to happen or if we don't know where we're going, we know that we can trust you just like Abraham in this story trusted you. Abraham didn't know where they were going, where they were going to end up, but he knew that you told them that you were taking them to a good land and that they were to follow you. So God, thank you for the story where we see where Abraham trusted you. And also thank you for this story because we learn about sharing with others and about how Abraham decided that he was going to trust you. Abraham decided that even though his cousin took the land that had more grass, Abraham knew that he could still trust you to provide food and water for all of his animals. So God, thank you so much for these wonderful stories, examples of Abraham, of someone in the Bible who chose to trust you and God, please help us to trust you too. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, thank you so much for joining me for Bible time. I'm going to put away my Bible story book. And you guys are going to go watch a quick music video before heading on upstairs to see Amanda's craft. And then after a few more music videos, you'll be back down here for our question of the day. All right, well, I hope you guys all have fun doing that, and I'll see you back here in just a little bit. Bye. I said.
paper. I did the river and the grass and the hill and, and I even colored some white on the sheep too. The very next thing that you need to do is to cut things out. Now this paper, we're not gonna cut it, but this paper, we need to cut out the sheep and the hill with Abram and Lot on it. So I'm gonna cut those things out and I'll be right back. Okay, so I got the sheep and then also the hill with Abram and Lot all cut out. Now what you can see is that there are two gray tabs on the bottom of each of these pieces. And then there's a nice little gray box here. Now, they didn't put the other gray box on there, but just kind of imagine, like right here, I didn't color it. Imagine that there's a gray box like that, and then a gray box like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna glue these two gray boxes onto there and there, and you're gonna glue these two gray boxes for the sheep on the place where it says sheep, and then also right there too. All right, so I'm gonna do all that folding and gluing, and maybe I'll get a little bit of tape too, just to help me, just with one, and then I'll be right back to show you. Okay, so I turned it around a little bit, just so that you can see what it looks like. So I took the hill part, and you can see how I glued it like that, and look, now it's standing up. All right, well, I guess the only other thing I have left to do is to glue on the sheep and then I'll be all done. Oh, I love it. Oh, and the best part about it is it will remind me that I can trust God too. Oh, and don't forget, if you make one of these or if you do any other kinds of art and craft projects, me and Miss Christina would love to see a picture of it. So don't forget to send us your pictures. All right. I hope you all had a great time in craft today. I'll see you next time. Bye! Ooh. I decided to follow Jesus. I have decided.
change coming your way cause like it or not nothing stays the same so hold on tight and follow real close god is good and he's in control clap your hands like this now do the twist stop your feet the same Welcome back. I hope you had a great time with Amanda working on that craft and watching those music videos. 
now I have my question of the day for you all. So kind of thinking about the story I shared with you earlier, the kind of silly one about my birthday and figuring out things like quarter birthday, half birthday, three quarters birthday, I was just wondering if any of you have ever tried to figure out what is your half birthday or maybe what is your quarter birthday or three quarters birthday? And have you ever done something fun on your half birthday? I remember when I was little, I saw this TV show. I think I was in preschool when I saw this. I saw this TV show where the character on the TV show celebrated their half birthday. And they actually did half of a cake and half of, I don't know what they did, but it was, it was something kind of silly like that. And I remember asking my mom, mom, can I have a half birthday party? And she was like, where'd you get that idea from? So I was just thinking it would be kind of funny to hear if any of you have tried to figure out what your half birthday was and then maybe you did something fun. Like probably not a whole birthday party because you know, birthday parties can be big and like time consuming things to plan, but maybe you could just do something a little bit fun. Like maybe you could have a whole sheet of stickers and then like put them on like a coloring page or something. I don't know, just something kind of fun on your half birthday. <laughs> All right, well, I hope you guys all had a great time today in Children's Church. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I hope you have a great week. I'll see you next time. Bye.